Five dogs that are not good guard dogs. 1. The Siberian Husky. Although his wolf-like appearance may seem intimidating, he is not a guard dog. 2. The Golden Retriever. This dog will befriend burglars on sight. 3. The Labrador Retriever. This dog, like his golden cousin, was bred to be extremely friendly dogs before defending you. He will offer therapy and act as an emotional support dog for burglars. 4. The American Bully. Although his muscular appearance may seem intimidating, this dog is not a guard dog at all. He was bred generation after generation to be a confident and friendly dog with people and that includes burglars. 5. The AVB. The American Pitbull Terrier was bred from ancient times to be a fighting dog that is friendly with people, but not so much with other dogs. An American Pitbull will never show aggression towards a human, they are very trusting and affectionate with them, therefore with burglars as well, he may even invite them in. David, good morning, here we are. You're already giving me a hard time, you're already giving me a hard time. Greetings to everyone in the chat, to everyone and to you, of course. This is what you bring me today. Yes, let's see. Ah, the question I ask. You say that they are not good for guards. Well, the question is, E-H, why? Why not? Why don't they look at the temperament of the animal more than the phenotype of the animal? That is the question I ask you. Myths and legends, as we have said so many times in my videos, yours too, in all our chats, myths and legends. I have known Labradors with a high temperament. Well, before this, all dogs defend, all dogs have the sense of being a sentinel, also the Hasqui, since EH they were EH gathered together as a pack. Hey, when they are going to do it, they are going to pull the sled, they are all forming a pack and well, if a polar bear, a wolf, a desert fox, any animal comes, obviously the Siberian Malamute, I mean, the Greenlandic, I don't care. They all have a defensive instinct. They are all good for everything. Another thing is that you can train them with that genetic memory to attack and defend. But I assure you that I have seen Haskus bite a lot. A Husky also bites. You could also put a sleeve on it, it could also go to a Chirito to a HKY if you bite the cap and it will also catch it because, ultimately, and in the end it is still a canine, a dog that does not have that genetic memory of a Malinois or a German cane check line to go to the sleeve and such, I will buy it from you. However, a Malut or a Husky could attack and defend, well, possibly also. Depending on the temperament, possibly also. What happens is that, of course, we see the supposedly working dogs taking care of that. Labradors, I have seen many very dominant Labradors that also defend the house, the protection and that's it. Depending on the context, depending on where they live, and well, an American pit bull makes you laugh. Well this really is a little, I don't know, it makes me laugh a little. That's why, that's why this video is here, right? It's like classifying the hills simply. That due to their physical condition or more than their temperament, EH, they are already classifying them. Well this one is like this, this one is like that and there is nothing beyond that. I mean, EH, how can I explain it so that it can be understood? It is corroborating, there is the behavior, it is corroborating the behavior 100%. Like a yes, the golden, the golden, for example, is not very very they are all very they are all the same. It does not depend, as I said again, on the temperament. It can be more dominant or a higher intensity, a lower intensity, it can be more of a sentinel, it can be an insecure dominant, it can be of one variance. Of course, but what can I ask you the question, what can happen? If everyone is carried away by this influence? 
Of course, there is the thing that comes the idea of all look. Well, I want this dog that is perfect for my family. You idealize it, you take it home, you have it while it is small, even if it bites you and makes some gestures at you. Well, it is small, you still control it, but when it grows and you no longer control it, what happens then? We do not know that it always ends up either in the hands of some trainer, male or female, who instead of exactly. Instead of resolving the situation in a more natural way and taking a good step, well it can make it worse, it can make it worse, eh? There will be those who are the key. It is that there will be that yes, we are not going to say that everyone is very bad, no. There are those who do with the key, but most of them, due to the methods, techniques and these things, end up ruining the dog. How many times have they come? At least to me, I know that it has for sure come to you, but it's that they've come to me too. It's that I've been through two or three trainers, it's that it doesn't work, it's that this and that. So, well, we start to develop the discourse, I open their eyes, they understand it, which is the important thing, and then they start to see things in a different way and it changes. But that's in the best of cases. In other cases, what usually happens a lot more is to let the dog be taken and left in the kennel and it goes out of control, it's reactive. Exactly. So, everything. That root of thought comes also comes driven by that type of videos. That's why I put it more than. Sure, sure, sure. The Labrador is like that. The box is the dog of the child, of the children. Look, I have met hundreds of Labradors throughout my life, more than 30 years and from Golden River, who because they are not the figure of control and have a more dominant temperament, yes. Bad, bad, you hit him in the nose, you hit him in the nose. You get angry, you turn around, you copy what's on TV, you. Improvise like crazy. That dog that's more dominant when it reaches sexual maturity will surely bite you. And it's a golden or it's a Labrador or it's a flat coat retriever. Let me know in the comments if you know what dog the flat coat retriever is. Now you're all going to see and you're all going to Wikipedia, friends. Hey, I know which one it is. I know which one it is and it has to do with this sweater. I won't say more, I won't say more so there are no clues. Well, what can I say? In the end, how do you sum this up, right? For example, so that everyone finishes it so that they come to their senses, right? What I mean is the fact of cataloging dogs is potentially dangerous. Ah, it doesn't mean that it's dangerous. Why? For exactly what we've said, because it can be more negligent or more dominant. And I have seen. Temperament. We are the only ones saying it. Of course. The dog sector. Of course. How many times have we seen? Well, there are thousands of videos on the internet where you see pit bulls or bull terriers or whatever you want next to children and nothing happens. And that's whatever you want, nothing happens. Dot. Hey, that's why you shouldn't categorize. You shouldn't categorize by the phenotype of the animal and you have to label it to one thing or another. Because that will lead us into constant error and the same pattern will repeat itself again and again. And again and again. That's why we're talking, trying to make you understand that it's not like that. Okay?
To get that bias out of your head and try to try together, all of us, all of us, to understand the animal world from another more natural, more organic perspective and together to change this crazy world that once, do you understand this? Ah, E.H., it blows your mind. I mean, it's that these types of videos are great, David, thank you very much. What can I say, I mean, these types of videos, on top of that, they put a marker there at the beginning. Well, these types of videos are going to generate tremendous confusion and can become a danger because, hey, you get a bulldog, a powerful dog, an American pit bull terrier or an American bully. And there are many types of sizes, in extremists, in the pocket, I don't know how much. Exactly. And you get a big dog with a high temperament, you don't know how to guide it well, you're not a control figure, you don't know how to create the limitations well suited to its species, you fill it with conditioning on top of it, you create anchoring of its nest, anchoring of eyes, that is, you train it in a functional way and the dog is going to go to war. The dog is going to go out to protect you because its protective instinct is in its canine mind. Because in a litter of Labradors, American pit bulls, Aquitaine, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. There are individuals that have a lower rank, a submissive rank, that in the case of living naturally in the countryside. Because we always say the same thing, the dog is going to live with the human being, but in reality they should be. It is as if they were wild, I always think, the dog does not make wild, I always say in my videos, the dog does not make wild. Imagine a litter of whatever is in the woods and they all live together, that litter and they all live together. They would each have their perfect temperament without human manipulation. And there is, what I mean by this is that there is a lower rank that is like Porto's was, who is no longer here. With my primitive flanks, very jackal-like and because of coughing he seemed very submissive and such, when everyone is sleeping, he is on guard, that is why he is bigger. That is why each one has a different size because size is also linked to his birth temperament and his hierarchical role. In many cases the alpha is not so big, sometimes it is smaller and the beta has a bigger point and we are not making this up. You have been seeing this for many years in wild animals as well, there is always one that is a little bigger and that is like the sentinel of the alpha and the most submissive one, because there is also a submissive one. What do I mean? You can have a golden retriever, he comes out super submissive and you say, and you, let's see, you can have that variation of a dog, of a golden retriever a submissive one, you are a super calm person and you say, do you see how the golden retriever is like that? If you had taken a brother, as I say in my video, of my dog is crazy, you take a brother, maybe, as I say, Russian roulette, and you behave the same and the variation is different. It is different. But you were lucky. I have known many pit bulls that are super high-spirited and many American Staffords that are a piece of furniture. A piece of furniture and maybe their brother has a very high temperament and that very high-spirited dog that you get would have been sacrificed in the past. And now I ask you the question. Or or as to finish that example, or you take a poodle, a poodle, a poodle or a chihuahua into the pack. You put it there with a very high temperament and it becomes and becomes the leader and becomes the leader and becomes the leader. The leader does it. Okay, but look at what I mean. I mean, no matter how much we have removed the most submissive dogs, submissive dogs always come back. For the ignorant it is a defect, right? It is the one that is submissive in nature would have the peculiar characteristic of being the guardian when everyone is sleeping. When everyone is sleeping and everyone is resting, the most submissive becomes the false guardian. I don't want to, I don't want to say the false guardian, they become a sentinel. And of course you also see him b u b u b u b u b u with his tail up, his ears strung out and his chest high, a sign of strength. I am here. But when he is with the whole pack, how curious that he is submissive with everything. And when everyone is sleeping, well, many times Porto's recorded her saying, what the hell is this dog doing? Why? Because he was saying, he was guarding the territory, like we are here.
Of course, the case of a stab was warning, he was. Warning, indeed, correct, that they were there and the others remain calm. It is their mission within the general group, of the pack. In other words, they all have a mission. And in a natural way, in other words, it is not that you implant it. It is that the curious thing is that it is a pattern of behavior in the animal world that is repeated over and over again. We can always see it. No matter how much you eliminate that temperament, it will always come out because you cannot break nature. Nature is wise. We have said it so many times, that is why many times it is thought that by crossing the greyhound that runs the fastest with the greyhound that runs the fastest, they will all come out faster than no, no, that temperament is worth it, but they continue doing it. Of course. E.H. What do we do? Control the instinct of when people come to us with quite powerful dogs. We try to teach them to control that instinct, to lower it and to graduate it. Of course, of course. Because if I had to, that's why you have to know how to identify the temperament that you're going to learn only with this because nobody talks about the temperament of birth and we already know what temperament it is with a video too, David, of 7 seconds, I already know what temperament it is, I usually never fail. When people come to the classes, I tell them, see how I told you from a video that it was like that, son of a. Well, for me it's normal, it's my daily work for so many years. That's why you had to learn to the millimeter to understand the temperaments of birth, because you can have a single individual, such as a submissive one, that you can create. Let's see, there's one that's a, there's one that's a sheepdog, there's one that's the sheepdog that doesn't bark, that doesn't even guard. There's one that sometimes comes out like that and that's good and that's there and maybe even in a natural pack it could have its place, right? It could happen, but well, that is another topic since one day we will talk about it, but we are going to try to say that there is a range, the sheep range and the sentinel sheep range, the submissive sentinel, which is calm with everyone, but if it has to go into battle it also goes out, it goes into battle and joins in. But it joins in, but it is more sensitive and it knows that when everyone is sleeping it is its turn to work and it gets stronger too. Imagine that you have that dog with a submissive temperament, that dog is always going to be on sentinel. That is what we have to understand, that the genotype of the dog's temperament with our genotype of the temperament of our personality, that is, the personality together with our personality is going to manifest itself in its actions, the manifestation that it is going to have is the one that we are going to provoke. That is why there are no behavioral problems. The behavioral problem is ours towards the dog. The lack of anything else enters the house. Well, I think it has become quite clear, right? Hey. Please leave us comments if you want us to analyze it in a little thing. A little thing. Forgive me. Regarding the press dogs, the pit bull and the American bull that have come out. This video is very dangerous because if you have a high temperament of an American pit bull terrier with a very weak person who doesn't know how to create the ones who don't know how to restrain the instincts and fills you with. A powerful one that bites you. Then a Labrador is also potentially dangerous, but I think this video is very daring. So thank you very much to everyone and I'll see you in the next video. We love dogs.